as we are recording this um, for anyone who isn't able to make it and we'll send everyone a copy of the recording as well. Um, so thank you all for joining. I uh, really appreciate that. Ah, Kathy, yay. <laughs> Naomi, all right, great. See, it's always it's always this moment. I love it. The moment of like- Everybody else is like on? coming on. <laughs> all right. So you can wear. You want to share your screen? Oh, you can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hi, Kathy. Hi, Megan. I muted y'all. Yeah, I guess we can probably get started. Yeah, why don't we share the screen and yes. you can start chatting yes. about this stuff. Do. All right, well, I think we're gonna get started and we'll just bring Christian on um, once he hops on, because we have a couple things that we'd like to share. Um, uh, welcome to the Fungivore Info call. Uh, this trip, uh, this call is for our trips with Christian, which are gonna be in Oaxaca and Ixlan um, in late September and uh, also in late September, Chiapas. September um, into October. September yeah. into October. Mm -hmm. And we'll just start with introductions. Uh, I'm Kim, and this is Zach. I'll let him introduce himself in a moment. Um, mm -hmm. But I fell in love with uh, mushrooms about the same time as I fell in love with Zach it's about my, five years fault. ago. <laughs> it's his fault. Um, and yeah, we've been actually doing this in Mexico for since we've met. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and really got to uh, kick it off again in 2021. Um, 2022 when we moved here um but i also have a company called traveling traders bazaar that focuses on artisan tours and hands-on maker um immersions which include our my calories for mushroom dyeing. that's another way he hooked me um and i'm just really excited to have christian with us this year and uh to go back to ixlan and to go to chiapas so mm -hmm. i'll kick it over to zach uh well so my name is zach or zachary um and i have been picking mushrooms for about 25 years or so and um, have been in the professional mushroom world now about 12 years, mostly in the California scene, which is where I've met Christian. I've known Christian about the same length of time as I've known most of the folks that I that I still know, uh, which is about 12 years. Nama did a Scotts Valley regional foray and I just moved to the area and I went and I basically met everyone. Um, and it's been amazing. And as Kim said, we moved here, we've been doing tours uh, as the fungivore since 2019, uh, first couple with Alan Rockefeller in Oaxaca, has started in Oaxaca. Um, and so this will be our what, fifth, yeah, our fifth season uh, doing tours. We have five uh, planned this year, plus another NAMA event. So we're really excited about that. Um, and we're going to be talking about two of them today. So... Matt Christian, are. did you just hop in? Christian just hopped on. Perfect right. timing for the next slide. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we are happy to, to have Christian Schwartz with us. Thank you so much for hopping on, sir. And uh, Christian is a mycologist and a co-author of one of the probably most up-to-date books, I suppose he'll probably argue with me on that, uh, The Mushrooms of the Redwood Coast, which has been very useful all the way into Oregon as well as in uh, Oaxaca as well. Um, and uh, I've known Christian about 12 years or so. And uh, yeah, I'll let him introduce himself a little bit and then we can have a little discussion. Christian, you ready? Yeah, can you guys actually see me? Yep, we can see. You. Okay, yeah. I for some reason thought I was joining from my computer. So I'm on my phone. I hope this looks all right, but um, how's it going? Hi, everybody. I missed introductions. So I don't actually know who all is here. Uh, well, we introduced ourselves, really. There's It's a oh. bit more of a one way at the beginning and then we'll have questions at the end. <laughs> I, at least I recognize Gary. Hi, Gary, good to see you. <laughs> um, well, okay, so hi everybody, my name's Christian. I have spent most of my time as a mushroom person in Santa Cruz, um, which many of you have probably passed through at one time or another for their famous mushroom fair. Um, and that's where I was when I wrote Mushrooms of the Redwood Coast, um, my co-author on that, Noah Siegel. Um, but I also ended up teaching uh, mycology at UC Santa Cruz for a while. And I have just recently moved back to San Diego, where my family's from, 
and um, uh, working with a bunch of different um, on a bunch of different projects uh, related to fungi taxonomy, uh, taxonomy, ecology, microfloristics, and conservation, specifically California Fungal Diversity Survey. Um, but teaching people about mushrooms is my bread and butter. That is what I do all the time. Um, when I'm not doing that, I'm laying low and looking at flowers and plants and bugs and stuff. <laughs> but um, I guess my reason for being interested in joining this trip with, with Kim and Zach is that I uh, have been to Mexico many, many, many times. I grew up going to Mexico during the summers because my mother's from Mexico and my dad almost ended up living there. So he had a lot of history with Mexico. So that was my, that's where we went every, every summer as kids. And um, I learned to just really love it and um, have every time I go back to Mexico, I wonder why I'm not there all the time. Um, and so when Zach asked if I would be interested in, in going on this, I you know, like didn't really have to think twice. So I was like, yeah, I want to be in Mexico. Frankly, and weirdly, I had no but, idea that you have a history of Mexico at all when I asked you. So that was, like icing on the cake. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Um, funny enough, though, most of the time that I have spent in Mexico, I have not actually done very much mushroom stuff. And I have seen a lot of other people in my community post about, you know, what an amazing mushroom season uh, there can be in the summer to go um, engage with. And so I've, it's always been on my to-do list. And maybe this year is the year I finally get to get my feet fully wet. Um, so that's my hope. But I love biodiversity of all kinds. And, you know, Mexico is one of the most biodiverse countries in the world. So I'm hoping that not only will we see a lot of fungi, but um, there will be a lot of other creatures to capture our interest. In. And uh, um, yeah, a great segue uh, to do an introduction for uh, the, the, the tour specifically. And this may be, you know, Christian, Christian has sort of said yes and was enthusiastic and may not actually be completely up on the on the itinerary himself. Uh, so some of this he might be hearing for the first time as well. <laughs> um, but uh, so as I was saying earlier for the for the earlier fo the folks that joined right at the beginning, um, we got into this. Uh, I had heard of Oaxaca. Kim and I had been to Oaxaca once at this time, and I kept seeing at the Soma Mushroom Fair, which is the Sonoma Mycological Association's mushroom camp. That happens every January. Alan Rockefeller every Monday would post his slideshow of all of his mushroom photos from Mexico the summer before. And I was like, that's summer, that's so convenient that you can <laughs> not miss any other mushroom seasons and, and go out. So 2019, I asked Alan, I was like, hey, if I organize a group, would you be our mycologist? Um, and you know, we'll pay for your your trip. And he's like, Yeah, yeah, let's do that. And it all started here in Kwai Himalayas at the uh the, the I think this is the 19th regional mushroom fair. This is the oldest mushroom fair going on uh, in in Mexico. Uh, there are, God knows how many now, so many. Um, but that's, yeah, this is where it all started in Oaxaca. Um, and I wanted to take a big zoom out and kind of make sure that everybody kind of knew where exactly we were. Uh, and um, I, Kim and I are actually speaking to you from Oaxaca right now. So this is Mexico in terms of a relief map. and. A lot of people know Mexico for the beaches. And as you can see, most of Mexico is actually kind of a continuation of the Rocky Mountains. And that extends all the way down pretty much until the point of Oaxaca, which is at the very bottom with the Pacific Ocean in the, on the south. So Mexico is 31 states plus the city of Mexico, which used to be a district federal, but is now just Mexico City. Uh, and if you look way down there on the bottom, you'll see Oaxaca down there in yellow and immediately next to it, uh, almost to Guatemala there is Chiapas. And so those are the two states we'll be talking about today. And I'm gonna to touch on them really briefly, uh, just to kind of give a, a big overview before we talk about uh, the tours that we're doing down there. Um, the thing that I find incredible about Mexico, which really sticks with me and is actually incredibly important when it comes to ethnomycology and the mycology in general uh, of Mexico is how many indigenous language groups there are. Um, this is a very rough picture. There's almost, I think, over 600 documented languages now still spoken in Mexico today. Um, and, you know, Oaxaca, they have Zapoteco, but there are 16 language groups uh, and I think 47 different Zapotec languages just in Oaxaca alone. Um, so what makes Mexico so fascinating is a, a, a endless font of, old, of wisdom 
uh, of a very language that describes ecology uh, as has been known for thousands of years. Uh, so really quickly, here's Oaxaca. Uh, Oaxaca itself is sort of the bottom of the mountains that make up most of Mexico. Uh, and it is, it's made up of uh, several different ranges itself, the Sierra Madre del Sur and the Sierra Norte. When we're with Christian, we'll be in the Sierra Norte in a, in a town called Ixtlan. Ixtlan is part of a group of towns called the Mancomunados, which is a whole group of Zapotec indigenous groups that work together for ecotourism, mycotourism, Quajimaloyas, uh, where the fair was being one of those uh, eight. Um, Oaxaca itself is actually divided into eight different regions, which generally follow the larger language speaking groups, um, but also are pretty distinctive in terms of their customs, their food, uh, the clothes they wear, and often the music that they're playing and their dances as well. A lot of this is celebrated in July in Oaxaca at a festival called Galaguetza, when all of the cultures from around Oaxaca kind of uh, congregate in Oaxaca City. Um, the reason that it is so incredible is because of the diversity here in Oaxaca. As you can see, this is the 16 different language groups. Zapotec kind of dominates the scene in a lot of it, also in the tourism as well. Uh, in Ixlan, we will be working with the Zapotec folks. Um, and we've done some work with the Mixtec as well, which is the large green group there on the left. Um, and immediately next door to Oaxaca uh, is Chiapas. And Chiapas is a fairly interesting state because there's actually a large break, uh, sort of a valley. I don't know if you can see my cursor there, uh, but right at the end of the Oaxacan Mountains and in what's called the Isthmus, uh, there's this sort of break in the mountains and then Chiapas Mountains uh, start all over again. And Chiapas, you may know it because Chiapas was the kingdom of the Mayans, whereas uh, the Zapotec in Montalban, the Zapotec Empire was in, in Oaxaca. The Mayan Empire spanned not just in Chiapas, of course, but all through the Yucatan, down through Guatemala, Belize, into Honduras, parts of El Salvador, uh, up and sort of bumping in with the Olmecs, which are in the Veracruz or in the Gulf of Mexico. So part of Mexico's ancientness is that it wasn't just one culture or one group, but several kingdoms, several, several empires that existed. And similar to Oaxaca, the local indigenous language still spoken, at least spoken as of uh, 30 years ago, um, no, several of these are still there, um, is, is, evenly, is even more distributed. In fact, Chiapas is considered one of the most indigenous states of all of Oaxaca or of all of Mexico. And it's also considered uh, one of the most impoverished, unfortunately. Um, but as a result of that, a lot of the indigenous groups here haven't actually been touched or haven't had to integrate nearly as much as a lot of Mexico in the Mestizos. So Chiapas is a, a fascinating area. For me, I actually, in, in a past life, before I was a chef, before I got into mushrooms, I got a degree in geology. Uh, and I find the, the geography and the geology of Chiapas to be absolutely fascinating. Um, so what you're looking at, the red is the, the Chiapanecan highlands. And you can see behind that, that looks like a wrinkled up curtain, right? It kind of looks like a as if something kind of slammed into that and, and wrinkled up, say, I don't know, a huge coral reef that is the rest of the Yucatan. And that's exactly what happened. And so unlike the mountains of, of Oaxaca, which uh, were a volcanic and of, uh, of granite and basalt and, and whatnot, the mountains in Chiapas are actually karst, they're limestone. Um, because the, when the mountains came up, it's, it really did, it wrinkled up this carpet. And so you get the most incredible landscapes when you're in Chiapas. So you get these caves, everything is, is made of calcium carbonate. And so you get these very dramatic cliffs and canyons. Um, and as a result of that, you get some very, very interesting mushrooms as well. Um, I'll be honest, I am excited about going to Chiapas because we're working with our partner Ezekiel Cruz, who's a local mycologist who's been studying the mushrooms there. Uh, I don't know a ton about Chiapas, uh, and I'm excited to learn more. You know, we spend a good amount of our time here in Oaxaca. So for us, this is our first time going to Chiapas. It's a, a very exciting trip. Um, here's a sort of a menu, if you will, of the rest of our trips. We're talking about the last two there, my comida Ixlan and my comida Chiapas. Christian, do you have anything that you wanted to add about Mexico that you know of or Oaxaca or Chiapas? Um, <clears throat> One of the last big trips I did in Mexico was in Oaxaca and Chiapas, and um, I was mostly mostly birding, but um, I did find some mushrooms there, and the plant life was astounding. Um, yeah, I was uh, all the way from sort of um, coastal sage 
or not sage coastal scrub on the on the drier slopes all the way up to the rainforest in the Reserva Biosfera Monte Azul, I think it's called. All right. Um, yeah, and it was amazing. I, I would love to be back. Well, you will be. <laughs> um, so we really work hard to make partnerships with a lot of local experts. That's that's a huge part of what we do. And from the beginning, actually, because we asked Alan, mainly because Alan knew what he was doing and we didn't, uh, we sort of kept up this uh, this tradition of bringing in our own expert and then partnering with local ex experts. So between the two trips, these are the experts that we work with. On the lower left-hand side is Marta. Marta is a local Hungera, uh, which is a, a mushroom picker and a medicine woman as well. Uh, she runs a local cooking school. And on the excellent trip, we're actually going to be doing a, a mushroom cooking class with her. Um, and she is uh, holding a very young cauliflower that we found a couple of years ago. Uh, up in up in the uh, Sierra Nortes. Right above that is me uh, with some Amanita uh, bassii. And these are one of the local Caesarea, section Caesarea mushrooms that grow up here. I think that's maybe several thousand meters above my house, but you know, kind of walking or driving up from our house. Right next to that is our Zapotec nature guide. Uh, that is Celestino. He is someone we actually met him uh, in the, at the 2019 Quahimalayas Mushroom Festival. He is an orchid expert. So he and Christian will have a bunch to geek out on. Um, and he is uh, absolutely a charming individual. He's a recent daddy. Uh, and we get to see him and his baby tomorrow. So that's really exciting. Uh, right next to him is Ezekiel Cruz. Ezekiel is just wrapping up uh, I believe his PhD in uh, his study of the Sumidero Canyon. Oh, so we're just going to mute you. Thank you. Uh, and so we're really excited to uh, get to actually be a part of his research. So he's going to be looking for and collecting mushrooms in the Sumidero Canyon while we're there, some of the tropical mushrooms, uh, which will be you know, avoiding crocodiles while we're picking these mushrooms. Uh, and then we're gonna go up into San Cristobal de las Casas um, and that's into the highlands in the mountains up like 8,000 some feet to do the bulk of our time up there. Christian introduced himself earlier. Uh, we just love that photo so much. And then in the bottom there is Kim uh, with some silk that she dyed with mushrooms recently. Yes, those are, that's actually at Ixlon. Yep. Um, last time we were there last year, uh, I've been <coughs> diving into dying, dying with mushrooms. And so I also bring that to all of our other trips. So we will also be looking for dye mushrooms and I'll be um, doing testing and showing people also about that aspect of mushrooms. And we won't be visiting on either of these two trips, but if a lot of people don't realize there is a silk producing village in Oaxaca. Uh, deep hmm. in the mountains. And we are actually going to be working with them during one of the dye trips and foraging for dye mushrooms in their forest, which they've never done before. And they were really excited about that since last year. Um, so that's part of our Michael Laurie's trip. So that's really exciting. Um, let's see, whatever. Oh, there we go. Uh, so real quick, we'll talk about Micromita Ixlan. Maybe Kim can talk a little bit about our prior experiences in Ixlan, and uh, and I'll tell you about some of the mushrooms we've been finding there as well. And then we'll go into some of the highlights uh, for this adventure. Yeah, I mean, uh, Ixlan is a beautiful mountain community and has an incredible um, ecotourism uh, site that is, I believe, like 20 or 30 acres. It's quite it's huge. large. Yeah. Um, and since we've been going to Ixalan in mushroom season, it has always been a great time. Mm -hmm. um, uh, beautiful cabins, adobe cabins with wood fires, uh, and an on-site restaurant with incredible food. And the cool thing with Ixalan is that they allow us to use their conference center, um, and they have a little, you know, area for kitchen. So we do a lot of cooking demos and and taste a lot of the mushrooms. What really surprised me the first time I ever went there is for if anyone is familiar with Mendocino mushrooms, Kathy is looking at you. Uh, Ixlan is like identical to coastal Mendocino mushrooms, except that you're at 7,500 feet up in the mountains. And it's like Craterellis, you know, all of your Romarias, you know, several, uh, it, it, it's awesome. <laughs> it was totally like, wait, what, what is going on right here? Um, and in fact, I think Christian will, will look for them hard this time. I think I found three new species of Craterellis up there. Uh, two years ago, we found one of them again last year, but then lost it. Um, so there's a lot to explore. Um, you want to talk about some of the highlights? 
Well, I mean, I'll take some of them and you can take yeah. some of them too. Um, yeah, some of the highlights for Ixlan is like we do begin our trip uh, in Oaxaca City. We begin and end our trip in Oaxaca City um, and uh, normally go to some of the best restaurants. Um, mm -hmm. People have said they're some of their highlights. Uh, we'll also get to see the ancient site of Monte Alban, which is just above the city. We have an incredible guide who's second generation uh, Zapotec guide. Her father is a guide of Monte Alban and she'll be uh, showing us around um, and learning mm -hmm. more about the site before we then head up into the mountains, mm -hmm. um, which not on here also includes learning how they make the molininos, which yeah. is the wooden for uh, making tools hot for making hot chocolate. We'll stop by the family so the that original beater. has been um, <laughs> making that for a long time. Yeah. Uh, and then once we get to Ixlan, it's really yeah. Zach and uh, Christian's Zach game. And Christian show. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we, we call these my comida because it's really using food as an element um, mm. of edible mushrooms as an, as, as an element to sort of focus this. As Kim said, there's always a dying element as well to all of our trips. Um, but this one kind of, because we have the, the conference center and we have uh, the projector and we can do classes and this place, unlike others, we don't have to drive to any of the 4A areas. We literally just walk out of our cabins and try not to step on mushrooms. Um, it's, it's really, really cool. Uh, so we actually have a lot of free time in the afternoons and into the evenings where we can do presentations. Uh, and so depending on people's interest, we can actually gear various presentations. I, I was lucky to be live at Christian's smell presentation at the Soma camp and was absolutely was like, that one's gotta be also at Ixlan. Uh, and I have similar ones on taste actually. Um, so uh, a lot of it focused on the eating and cooking of mushrooms and sort of the science behind what's going on with edible mushrooms. Of course, we'll be collecting everything for our ID table, um, but I'll be cooking up stuff that you know I'm now comfortable eating that I wasn't super sure of until I moved here uh, and everybody eats it. Um, I think we found 27, 28 varieties in one day of edible mushrooms, identified edible mushrooms, I should say, uh, at Ixlan uh, a couple of years ago. So yeah, that is a really, really, really fun. Oh, this is, yeah, five nights in the cabin. Yeah. So uh, if you have any questions, you can type them in the chat or we can ask them after the fact. Um, one second. Yeah, I saw some questions already coming. Donna, we will. Uh -huh, great. Donna will answer your vaccination question uh, at the end of this. Okay. Yeah. Great. Um, so for the Michael Chiapas, uh, we're really, really excited for this. Kim and I have been to Chiapas twice at this uh, so far, and the first time we got to go was because the National Society of Mexican Mycologists was holding its like quatra annual. Uh, event, which was a seven day long, nonstop presentations of PhD students showing all of their work. And it was very mycological and very uh, phylogenic tree and very over my head because it was also all in Spanish. Um, I was the only gringo there. I didn't speak Spanish nearly as well as I do now, but it gave us a really cool opportunity to meet a ton of the professors and mycologists here in, in Mexico because everyone con congregated the same and got to spend some time with Ezekiel, uh, who I'd, I'd connected with the year before. Uh, and Kim really got to dive into some of the textiles of Chiapas as well. Um, and so we actually had talked to Ezekiel about potentially doing this last year. Uh, it didn't work out due to our, due some scheduling. Uh, and so we're really excited that this year uh, it is happening. If you are on this call and interested in Michael Chiapas, I should tell you there are only two spots left on that trip out of 12. Um, so uh, if you want it, let us know, because uh, it's probably going to sell out real soon. Um, so... Michael Chiapas is going to be really fun. And we've sort of like pulled out all the stops because of all the things that we found that we love to do uh, and that we're really excited to share. Um, so in addition to it sort of being a mycomita, but also a mycological exploration of what Ezekiel is doing, we're gonna take a chocolate ca class. Oaxaca consumes more chocolate uh, than anywhere in Mexico, but Chiapas grows and produces more chocolate than anywhere in Mexico. Hmm. Uh, and so we're going to be working with uh, one of the local chefs there uh, to actually make some medicinal mushroom chocolate bars. Uh, we'll also visit the Mayan Medicine Museum, which is a quaint, uh, really cool little spot uh, in San Cristobal. Um, there's the textile museum and the local artisan markets is almost, you can't really avoid it. You almost have to go through that. And it is, it is a feast for the eyes, the, the patterns. Uh, that the mountain, mountain Mayans do and the stuff they bring in is incredible. Uh, well, also we've, we've met some really great guides who will give us a little guide of the, of the, of the city itself. 
uh, which is a Spanish colonial city. That's uh, almost 500 years old, I think. Um, we will be foraging under the guidance of Ezekiel and Fungaria, which is three different days. Three different days. Uh, and then one day we're actually doing a picnic um, in a park, uh, which will include some foraging and some caving as well. Um, I think the park is actually that upper left picture there with the, with the river in it. Um, and we'll also be doing some cooking classes uh, from one of the local chefs as well, Carla, uh, who's uh, one of the members of Fongaria. Uh, and the accommodations are really nice in, in San Cristobal. Because it's such a small town, we get to leave and come back for the hotel every night. And San Cristobal is a very walkable, uh, very uh, amiable city. It's, it's really exciting. And so we actually have a couple nights where we're going to let you all explore on your own and not try to tell you what we've found in, in San Cristobal, because it seems like a pretty awesome place to explore and everybody seems to find their own uh, thing. So for those who uh, would like to join, um, the first thing to do is to apply at the fungible.com. Uh, you will find on there, apply for our trips now. Uh, and what that does is gives us an opportunity to get to know you, uh, to know more about your history with mushrooms, what part of the country you're coming from. Your allergies. Your allergies, <laughs> food preferences, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and so but then we'll take a little bit of time to review that. And if you would like that, we, we can do a follow up call. You can text with us. We're always available. Um, and after that, you can submit payment to secure your spot. Um, we ask for a payment up front and the refunds follow the schedule below, depending on the trip that you uh, go on. The days for the refund will be different. Uh, and we can explain all of that to you by phone or however you like. And I do want to say to take the pressure off the application process, we have not rejected anybody who has applied for the fun to board right. tours. It's really for us to understand uh, what folks are looking for. And so we can make the best for like every trip and every group. Um, and if a trip sells out or if you don't make it this year, we, you're the first to know about next year's right. tours um, and get early bird discounts and other things. So mm -hmm. it's just great to know you're interested mm -hmm. if you're thinking about it. Mm -hmm. We had uh, a couple testimonials from previous trips. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's get to any questions. I know it's uh, late on the East Coast. Um, does anybody, so there was somebody who asked about any vaccinations required. There's no vaccinations required to travel to Mexico. Um, and we, uh, we do, uh, in, separate to, we have a COVID policy of, we I, ask for a COVID test. Um, it's clear on our site, but we actually, um, uh, when we start our first night, we have everybody send us a photo of a negative test, just because we want to know sort of as we get together as a group. Um, and that's been our policy since 2021. And we're pretty on you the four or five weeks before the trip starts being like, don't breathe on anyone. Don't touch anything. <laughs> don't, don't screw this up. <laughs> um, but we also, um, we have a back end to our website that is shared with all of our trip participants that has a extensive how to prepare for Mexico. Um, and uh, that includes, you know, how to take care of your belly ahead of time, how to um, how, how to know what is safe as far as drinking water and what food to eat, how to deal with cash, bank cards, phones, pretty much the it's whole. A it's, it's, a, it's a substantial page. It's a lot. Um, so um, if anyone has any questions, we're happy to answer that. Let's well, see. What are the days the, the trip that Christian's attending? Oh, Gary. I see. Uh, Gary, Christian is going to be with us for both trips, actually, for the September 17th through 24th, and then also the September 30th to October 7th Chiapas trip. Um, any other questions? Really great to see everyone. Thank you all for joining. Kathy, um, Kathy. you said you have two spaces on the uh, Chiapas? We have two spaces left on the Chiapas. But on the other one, how many spaces? On the other one, we have six. six spaces, I believe, and could be stretched to eight, I think, if we let them know soon. <laughs> OK, so six to eight spaces. Correct. Well, OK. Um, did um, Sydney contact you? He did. She did? Yep. Okay. Um, has she already signed up? I haven't looked at the sign up I haven't form. seen a formal application, but I think y'all were in touch just today Yeah, as well. she may have signed up since we were prepping for this call, so. Okay, all right. Um, well, I guess my my thinking is I gotta move my husband along, but uh, <laughs> maybe the two of us and 
I'm hoping Megan and Cam will come too. Well, that's amazing. Uh, so mm -hmm. then we yeah. would be five. So right. we probably need to move along quickly. <laughs> <laughs> right. have Everyone else hearing that right now. <laughs> Hi, Jazz. I see you there. Um, well, the nice thing about Ixlon is uh, we have a little bit of flexibility. We do have some with flexibility Ixlon, with Ixlon uh, because it's got a bit of a, it's got several cabins mm -hmm. um, and it's a little more, and, and we're on site on those grounds. Right. Um, so we'll, we'll see about interest, but yeah, we would love to have you, Kathy. Yeah, we would love to have I've you. I've heard a lot of great things. <laughs> yeah. How many people are on the trip? Uh, oh, there are four registered so far. Yeah. Four. We normally are oh. capping it at 12. Okay, got it. Okay, and how much hiking are we going to do? That one is actually really great because because all of our forays start at our cabin door and return at our cabin door. It's kind of uh, and and our hiking, if you will, is our you know slow mushroom shuffle. Um, and um, depending on how much you want to go, actually, it's it's a really really uh, easy terrain um compared to some of our other tours and because they're loops you, you can turn back early as long as you got a buddy um and um so it's a two to three miles a day and that includes sort of walking between cabins and up to the conference center and around the grounds and the grounds are pretty mild in both uh Ixlon as well as Chiapas yeah. actually yeah um of our various sites mm -hmm. this is a more they're more yeah. mild now Ixlon's great because Last year, coming out of my cabin, five feet down were the uh, Cantharellus cinnabarinus, um, as well as a couple a couple craterellus. And it was like right, you know, walk out the door and they're like, "Oh, great, <laughs> this is easy." <laughs> um, and you're really, it's really immersive. You know, it really is kind of kind of like your house, Kathy. <laughs> um, Brianna asked about uh, flights. The uh... B does not include flights. Uh, if you're coming into Oaxaca City, um, also if when you do apply, like Zach is a marvel at uh, finding affordable flights or getting people the right routes that sort of reduce flights. Um, so we're always happy to advise on that. Like we're mm -hmm. very helpful for anybody who comes on our trips to help with anything that you need. Um, and the uh, from the airport from Oaxaca City, it is about a 20 minute ride. Oh, sorry. Well, it can take up to an hour, but uh, it's there are these collectivos that are these shuttles that we recommend. Um, mm -hmm. They're done at the airport. You go up to a kiosk right at the inside of the airport. You give them your hotel, um, and then they drop you it, right. They drop you right there, which we recommend, and we have a fully detailed section on uh, on getting in in that respect. Mm -hmm. And then Tuxla, the airport is also um, within the city limits, and we'll be meeting at a hotel, um, which I have the name of, but. I, I'm going to share it here, but we have a, let's not tell everybody yep. the hotel to meet at uh, <laughs> to kick off our time together. Yeah. Do you see the Nama trip is substantially less different than the other trips? Um, yeah, I, uh, the Nama trip is, is different in the sense that we are staying at a luxury hotel. Um, and similar to Ixlon, the luxury hotel has mushrooms growing right under the cabins. Um, but the, the Nama trip is more formal, I would say, in some senses. We are doing uh probably more science more of the vouchering um where we're like looking at the mushrooms collecting them drying them storing them sending them to the the local university in the chicago field museum uh and it's the purpose is to work both with the mycologists and the local indigenous communities uh to create sort of a the, what nam is doing as a record of the mycology of the area um and uh and i'd say that would be the substantial difference between that it's it's a little shorter of a trip uh, days wise, mainly because the hotel we're staying in is the bulk of the cost and it's awesome. It's a 40 acre mixed forest luxury resort. This is just mushrooms ever. We found more mushrooms, I think, on hotel grants than we did on either of our- Well, you'll tell Zach. You can tell Zach is enthusiastic about everywhere we stay in every place. It's true. When I first met him, his mom told me there's not, there's not a place I've met that Zach doesn't like. That doesn't like. No, was, <laughs> every place I've ever been every is my place favorite. Every is your favorite. That was it. <laughs> wherever he is. So if we're not that keen on the ta taxonomy side of it and the luxury side of it, then mm -hmm. um, maybe the Ixlan trip might be a good choice. Ixlan, and then also if you're free earlier, we have another trip called um, My Camino Requestre, which is also in the Sierra Nortes. Um, that one is a, hiking. A that's Mexican like a Mycologist in Yaki. And that's actually also sort of much more immersed in nature 
who's staying in cabins there um hiking between between focused. towns that one's that one's a little so. more uh physically intensive but it's really really cool because you really <laughs> those are destination hiking okay and the cultural sort of immersion side of it would be strong on that one? Oh yes that one's like specifically we'll be going to the mitla caves mm -hmm. uh which are twelve thousand year old caves with paintings where they found the earliest pumpkin seeds um, we'll be hanging out with the mountain Zapotex and, and doing some mountain cooking as well. And I believe our, our calculations have been correct so far. I believe the Quahimolayas Mushroom Festival will be happening during our trip. Uh, and in which case, and what we, are the dates? Um, That's well, July 17th to 24th, I think. So it's on the er er earlier side. Um, but it's also really great and yeah. they do have spots on that one as well mm -hmm. right now and actually we're, we're going to do an info call on that with our partners one week from today. and celestino one week from today so yeah. if you're on our email list we'll also let you know about that call if you're yeah. interested to learn more mm -hmm. i think we're going to dune that day no, oh. we'll record that one as well and post it and so dune yeah. oh i know dune. i don't think i've been we to a movie, been to a movie since, since before the pandemic. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, well, I, I, it sounds great. Great. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. I'm hoping Megan and Cam will do it too. Um, We'd love that. And I'm, I'm trying to talk to Jay, talk Jay into coming too, but everyone's got summer plans in California. Well, that would be fun, huh? I know, right? I mean, well, we, gotta, we gotta hammer him from all angles. Okay, let's do it. I'll send him a, I'll send him a text. That, okay. No. Yeah. Okay. And for everybody else, it's great to be yeah, everybody great to be, else. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys all for coming. We'll have this um, recording up on YouTube probably by tomorrow. Um, and we'll make sure everyone um, gets a copy. If you see, do we have everyone's email or how do we? We reach everyone that was on here. If you want to leave your email, if you want to get a copy of the video, leave your email in the chat for us. Um, you can do it as a private uh, message to us as well. You don't have to. You don't have to send it. But um, if you got on Zach's email list, if you got mm -hmm. on the call because of Zach's email list, then, then we will send it. We'll on send the recording now. Yep. Um, I mean, he has your email. You have my email now. I do, Kathy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. We're Question, good. Any questions? Any final thoughts? Well, when was the last time you hunted mushrooms, and what did you find? It's dry season here. Give me something. <laughs> uh, let's see. I was. It's actually in San Diego um, and Southern California. It's still. It's raining right now. Actually, oh, uh, so, <laughs> so we're having one of those nice springs where it just it stays wet. And uh, I've been finding a lot of cool stuff in the chaparral here. Um, some of the mountain habitats actually extend across the border. So. Um, a lot of these things are the kinds of things that you find in northern Baja, where I actually spent time last summer after the hurricane. Oh, wow. And so there's a lot of tropical moisture at the end of the year, and it was cool. I found tons of mushrooms in, in Mexican mountains. Amazing. All right. Cool. I'm just going to hold that thought. We don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I did find dried out turkey tails yesterday, though. That was pretty exciting. I was like, I found a mushroom. <laughs> and I have some dried dye mushrooms and I've got a project I'm working on. So we'll yeah. still get our mushroom fix just um, all in dried form. So guys, if you don't have info at the fungivore.com, that's an email that's, uh, we, we check it 18 million times a day. Um, and we'd love to hear from you if you have any questions you think of just after we end the meeting. Um, and Kim is gonna add that to the, add that to the chat right now. And then, of course, the fungibore.com is our website. Please check that out. There's detailed itineraries of just about every trip, um, as well as pictures every and test every trip. Every trip yeah. has a, a daily trip. itinerary, yep. all the info. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, let's see. All right. All right. Yeah, that's cold. That's <laughs> real cold, Donna. Stay warm. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys we're gonna end this here um and like i said please um let us know if you have any questions sego I, and oi i saw that you joined a little later um we will be recording this and sending the record uh to everyone so thank you all gracias all right you. bye everybody bye bye christian bye christian talk soon bye, bye kim <laughs>